Welcome back guys. Uh, as you can see we're getting a little weather here at the home base today and uh, today is January 20th. It's the day of the uh, super blood wolf moon, super bloody wolf moon, whatever. I'm sure it's one of the million and a half things that we need to uh, be watching for. But in honor of all that, I'm going to do a little preventive maintenance on the camper today. And we'll go inside and, and I'll bring you up to speed on some things. to run the dehumidifier in here for a little bit today. Um, I repaired some leaks from the slide out and still got a little bit of, of moisture getting in from somewhere and I'm planning on in the spring uh, resealing the top of the camper. Um, you know, a, a camper is a good option for bugging out or I just call it my plan B you know if anything were to happen a uh, SHTF situation or you know and, and and that's a broad term because it can be localized situation right down to your very household you never know in today's economy when you may get laid off you could, you could lose your job and, and some jobs being scarce depending on where you are. Um, but, you know, you could, you could lose everything. And this, at least you know, you with something like this, you know that you have a shelter. And shelter needs to be your primary concern. You know, you go shelter, water, you know, for shelter, fire, water, food, and so on and so forth down the line. And it's like that in, in any mindset. It's not just like a wilderness survival thing. You have to think of that in, in broad term of life in general. Those are the things that you need. You know, and then you start getting down to comfort things. Well, if you can make each one of those, those items in any scenario as comfortable as possible, then you know, you're bettering your, your existence. Uh, you get to where you're not just surviving, but you're thriving. So, I decided I'd come out, and I probably should have done this a couple days ago. Come out, I'd run the dehumidifier for a while, just kind of get rid of any moisture I can. We had to replace the flooring in this when we got it, and I really don't want to have to do that again anytime soon, you know, maybe in a few years it would be fine, but you don't want to have to do it ever. I also, since I was here, let me bring you around a little bit. Okay. All right. Since I was out here, I figured I'd go ahead and stick the last couple of things I had picked up. Just stick them in the freezer out here just to, to leave room inside. Uh, picked up a bag of mixed beans. bag of rice and you just you're sticking those in the freezer for uh, you know a few days to make sure that you kill off any any uh, any bugs that might be in there that could hatch out or anything and you know then that they're more suited for long time long-term storage uh, I haven't got a vacuum sealer or anything right now I'm just kind of sticking things where we can and we're we're trying to get some of our uh, pantry items built up and I'll, along with that I'm just trying to pick up something cheap every now and then for our long term situation. Uh, do I see anything imminent happening? I mean no. I mean, you just want to be prepared. 
it's not out of fear, it's just out of, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, as you see right now, we're having a little bit of weather here, and uh, there's a lot of areas farther north that are really getting hammered, but uh, you just never know. You never know what's going to happen. Power go out. We've had situations in this area before where our power was out for over a week, and you know, if you've just got a day or three supply of food and water, and you're stuck to where you're in three feet of snow, you know, you might not be able to get somewhere to uh, to get some, you know, get somewhere that's open even to to get what you need. <clears throat> which you could always melt snow for water but you know food and if you lose electricity and you, all you have is fresh foods in your fridge or something uh, if you're you know unless you've got a place you could keep them outside which that's an option if it's cold enough you know move some of your perishables outside in a secure location maybe you've got a, a box built that you know you want to make uh, rodent proof animal proof uh, that in that situation, you know, you could keep your stuff from, from ruining. <clears throat> but anyway, back to the back to the camper. <clears throat> uh, we redid a lot of it, you know, just kind of added our spin on some things. We repaired some things that needed it and cleaned it all good. Cleaned the, the uh, jackknife sofa here, uh, new bedding and and whatnot, we've started putting a few little things in, that, uh, you know, just to uh, just to give it our own homey little feel. <clears throat> we did new wallpaper and, and border and uh, backsplash and cleaned up, you know, all the fridge, freezer, stove, microwave. It we got, and this is the kind of model that I wanted. <clears throat> I wanted something with a large refrigerator a cooktop plus a oven. <clears throat> I wanted a a dry bath. I, I, and it's hard to find all those things in a smaller model. You know, we have a Toyota Tacoma and that we need something that we could pull with the Toyota. <clears throat> the Toyota is rated for like, I think it's 5,000 pound full capacity tow capacity. Uh, this trailer even even wet comes in under four and you know when you say wet that's that's total capacity of all of its all your storage and there is quite a bit of storage that was another thing that I was looking for in a camper was you know I wanted the ability to store things that you know if we went to a plan B situation that we could have what we needed to to sustain us for a while, be it if we were just on a camping adventure, cross country or anything, that we wouldn't be having to stop every day to to, to get things. We've got, I believe it's a 40 pound freshwater tank or somewhere around there, it's like a 30, 30, 40 gallon freshwater tank. We've got uh, a two propane tank set up, which uh, I've got an empty one on there right now, and I'm using one in the house for to help with uh, heat and try to keep down our heat bills right now, plus the one for our, our gas grill. So we've got three total right now <clears throat> in the 20 pound propane tanks. <clears throat> uh, but it's set up with two instead of one. We've got it set up right now for one battery, which needs to be replaced, and I would like to change that out. Uh, get a bigger box for the tongue of the trailer to where I could have at least a two battery set up. I would love to be able to go with six volts. Uh, you know, you can research that about uh, running a six volt and uh, and bridging those together <clears throat> for your 12 volt. You'll just get a a lot longer hours service out of those. We would, we need to get a, uh, a generator for it. Uh, I would I would love to get some kind of solar panel system, maybe do uh, solar on, on top of the camper, that'd be great. 
uh, some battery storage to, to store energy is good. But it, it had about everything that we needed. And like I said, there's plenty of storage. There's storage over top of the bed, alongside the bed. Uh, there's plenty of storage here in the, the kitchen unit. There's storage above me here. I don't know if you see a little bit of it. Uh, there's storage. The whole underside of the bed is storage. You can stick a lot of stuff there. Uh, along under the front of the bed, you've got a pass-through storage that you can access from the outside. Uh, there's storage in the bathroom area all along that wall on that side, which would be the like the passenger side or the door side of the camper. <clears throat> Under the sink, you know, we got some storage here. Uh, so, and that, even back behind here, there's a little shelf, and underneath it, there's there's storage bins. So you got quite a bit of storage area. Uh, I would like to get like a couple of the ottoman type deals that are that you can open up to have storage in them. Maybe stick under the edge of the bed. That would also work as like a footrest ottoman for if you're just here hanging out. It's got a fold-up table that you stick here for you know your meals or working on your computer or whatever. Before we can finish the flooring, though, I have to solve this problem with the. Uh, water that's getting in. And it's not a lot. I, I about got it all took care of. Whenever we first got it, there was quite a bit coming in. And I about got that took care of. So I believe what's happening is somewhere on the top of it, which I've looked at it, and it doesn't look that great. I mean, it's not bad, but it doesn't look great. It could be, it could stand to be redone and everything resealed. <clears throat> so, uh, get that done. And, and yeah, I mean, Consider a plan B, you know, something that's within your budget, and you can usually pick up a cheap camper fairly cheap, you know. Check uh, the trade pages from Facebook that are in your area. That's where I found this one. Uh, you know, if you want to do Craigslist or whatever. Um, but, yeah, you can get uh, you can get a good deal on, on these used ones. It may just need a little bit of work, but, you know, if... If you don't have the budget to go out and buy something new off the lot, which probably overpriced anyway, then that's that's the way I'd suggest going, <clears throat> and just make it your own and make it, you know, get it paid for, and you know, which we're paying on this right now as we speak. Uh, we do have a plan to try and get this paid off quickly, to where you know that's covered if we can get the this and our tow vehicle paid paid down and, and paid off would be good in case anything happened. Uh, you know, if anything happened personally with us, we decided, you know, we could rent the house if we had to and generate a little income that way. And we, of course, you know, would love to, to, to keep everything how it is. You know, if ever, nothing ever happens, then we have this for vacations and camping and just family fun. But if not, we've got a plan B. You know, you should always have a plan A, B, C on down the line. Always think ahead of contingencies. And I'm going to try to do a couple different videos today. So I'm going to make this as short as possible. So guys, this is just one idea of a plan B for you. If you don't have a, a bug out location, another piece of land that you've already got a cabin or, or something on, then, then consider this. It might work for you.